Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Shiva. In this last episode, we established some of the mysterious circumstances around Joe DiMarco and our previous congregation attendee. In this episode, we're going to be trying to solve some of these puzzles and figure out where we go from here. So no communications from JDM on here, but now that we've got that information, let's go back and speak to the wife. Mrs. Lauder. Oh, it's you. Come on in. Have you ever heard of the name Joe DeMarco? Joe? Joe. Joe. Yes, I've heard of Joe. He was one of our first investors. He invested in Sherman? Yes. Why did you need an investor? Well, we didn't have much money to start the business with. All the banks saw us as a poor risk, so we needed independent investors. Have you ever met Joe? Jack handled the money stuff, although I know Jack didn't like him. Why not? He didn't say, he just didn't like him. But we were desperate, so we had no choice. How did they meet each other? I think they were introduced. At the temple of all places. At temple? So Joe DeMarco is Jewish? Maybe. Why? DeMarco is not a very Jewish name. And that's important to you, is it? Not to me, no. But it's certainly significant. Do you know if your husband did any business with a man named Ethan? Ethan. Ethan. The name sounds familiar, but I can't place it. I'm sorry. To be honest, I didn't really keep up with the business side of things. Is he involved? Hard to say. Okay, so that gives us something to go on. Really Clearly, Joe Jewish. DeMarco is Thanks. Jewish, uh, or allegedly is, anyway. And that means that regardless of whether we've got any more locations to discover, we should be able to go look him up on our computer back at the synagogue. So we will go and do that. So into the search function and we'll have a look for DeMarco, see what that turns up. No entries for him there. I wonder if we've had anything in the mail. Hmm, doesn't look like it. Well, okay, we're gonna have to try something else. Uh, let's have a joke. Martin Lewis converts and becomes a priest. He gives his first mass in front of a number of high-ranking priests who came for the occasion. At the end of the new priest's sermon, a cardinal goes up to congratulate him. Pastor Lewis, he said. That was very well done, but you were just perfect. But next time, please don't start your sermon with fellow goyim. Excellent. Good stuff. Right, well, let's log off. And let's have a look around for anything else we can get about this Joe DeMarco fella. Okay, so the records are not there. Okay, so by putting these clues together about Joe DeMarco, uh, we can figure out they must have met at Temple. If we have a look about Jack Lauder, we might be able to find... Okay, so he was from Beth Tikva. Uh, I don't know if that's useful, perhaps? So now we know that he attended Beth Tikva, if we look for that in the search function, maybe we can find the address. Aha, yes, Beth Tikva Synagogue. Okay, 321 West 82nd Street. I've never known how American addresses work. That seems very confusing to me. Chief Rabbi Amos Zelig. Okay, well, looks like we're going to have to go have a chat with him. If I know this game, it's going to turn out they're not on the best of terms. Okay, so we're here at a obviously much fancier synagogue. I doubt Rabbi Stone has particularly fond thoughts on this place being uh, so well appointed by comparison to his place. Yep, a large tasteful stained glass window. I suppose it's okay. And, uh, oh, some framed photos here. Let's have a look at these. So E. Goldberg, could that be Ethan G, who we got the uh, information from from the computer at the Lauder's place? Could well be. Let's see if we can stand at his podium. Okay, so yes, we're clearly very jealous of his uh, setup that he's got here. Right, well, in which case we'll have to head through to the back and see if we can uh, find the rabbi. Yes? You're the chief rabbi here at Beth Tikva. I do carry that honor. So, what can I do for you, Mr... Uh... Rabbi, actually. Rabbi Stone. Well, fancy that. 
I can always spare time for a fellow rabbi. What brings you to our humble synagogue? Do you know Mr. Jack Lauder? Should I know Mr. Jack Lauder? <laughs> so he's getting our rabbinical responses with a rabbinical response of his own. Excellent. He was a member of your congregation. He died a few days ago. That's right. The funeral service was yesterday. I honestly don't know where my head is these days. You conducted the ceremony? Yes. His wife insisted on it. Did she now? If I may ask, what is your interest in Mr. Lauder? Aren't all matters of our flock our concern? Uh, well, not every matter, but still, we do what we can, don't we? So we'll consult on it, see if he knows a Joe DeMarco. Does the name Joe DeMarco mean anything to you? DeMarco? Yes. Sounds Italian. Other than that, it means nothing. Sorry. Okay, well let's have a look at Ethan then. Are you familiar with an Ethan G? Ethan G? Is that his name? Just an initial as far as I know. Ah, well, nothing leaps to mind, I'm afraid. You must know him though, because he's on that picture in the... Uh... Yeah, let's ask about Jack Lauder. you can tell me about Mr. Lauder? I'm afraid not, Rabbi Stone. My congregation is rather large, and Mr. Lauder seldom attended services. I'm sure I don't need to tell you what that's like. You certainly don't. Oh, he's getting some rabbinical turf wars up in here. Do you know anything about Ethan G meeting up with Joe DeMarco? You know, honesty. I have no idea who Joe DeMarco is, so I'm afraid the answer is no. We've exhausted all the dialogue, so we'll head Good back to the you, office Rabbi for Zelle. now. Good night to you. Now that we know that it's uh, Ethan Goldberg, maybe we can find something about him on the computer. Okay, so back to the search function, and let's put in Ethan Goldberg and hope it isn't case sensitive. No, it's not, and oh, okay, this doesn't sound good. The Countant Dead in Murray Hill Shootout. Ethan Goldberg of Beth Tikva was found dead last night in Murray Hill Alleyway outside Paddy O'Hare's pub, the victim of an apparent mugging. We at Ravnet express our sympathies to Ethan's friends and family. Okay, so that's not good. It does mean we've got something to go back to uh, the other rabbi about, though. Now we can take that back to uh, back to Rabbi Zelig and see what he has to say about it. Because he, he must remember Ethan Goldberg if, uh, if he was killed. Yes? Okay, so let's consult our notes and Goldberg. I was hoping you could tell me something about Ethan Goldberg. I know he used to work here. Ethan? Oh, what a tragedy. That man did wonders for this community. It's a shame what happened to him. You know about his death? Of course. I conducted the funeral service myself. I recently found out that Ethan Goldberg and Jack Lauder did business together. Really? I'm not surprised. Ethan offered his services to many people. He was a whiz with an adding machine. So I heard. So, I wonder if that gives us anywhere else to lead this conversation. So now we can ask him, now we've got a new dialogue option here. Comment on various oddities. Let's see what this brings up. Doesn't any of this strike you as odd? Should it? Two Jewish men. Both in business together and both belonging to the same synagogue are killed within two weeks of each other. A third man, who may or may not be Jewish, is nowhere to be found. There are only two connections between these three men. One is Jack's business, the other is this synagogue. Rabbi Stone, I hope you're not suggesting anything... I'm not. Let me finish. People all over the world use religious communities to network and conduct business. This is nothing new. You know this, Rabbi Stone. If there is a connection, it has to do with their business dealings and nothing to do with Beth Tikva. I won't stand for our reputation being tarnished. Do I make myself clear? As crystal. I'm glad we understand each other. Now, if you'll excuse me, it is rather late. I understand. I'll see myself out. Wait, let me give you my card. 
Okay, um, so we seem to have made a success there. We've got his card. So we'll have a look at that in the inventory and see if there's anything we can uh, anything we can do with that. So, uh, back to Benai Benzile. And this is going to require another search function, I reckon. The computer being quite a central feature of this game. So up into the inventory. And yeah, we've got Zelig's card. So Amos Zelig. Beth uh, Rabbi Z at ravnet.com. Okay, so that's his login. It might be quite useful if we need to email him or search for info about him. So, um, let's have a look. Zelig. Okay, Amos Zelig bio and contact information. Contact information, we know that because we've been there already. Let's have a look at his bio. Moved to New York in 1963 with his wife Carol and his dog Dodger. Since then, he's been one of the most prolific rabbis in the city. His wife and dog are gone now, but Beth Tikva remains one of the strongest centers of the Jewish community. So, Carol and Dodger. I reckon if we were going to do a if we were going to do a, a hack into his account. Let's see if, what he knows. So, his rab is yeah, that's, that's right. And then uh, Carol or Dodger, I bet is one of those. So, clue ah, pet. Okay, well, that makes life easier. So, Dodger it is, and we are in. So. Uh, no, use, no extra functionality at the joke or search functions, but let's have a joke. Medical experts from London have published a paper that concludes that cedar participants should not eat both chopped liver and cirrhosis. I don't know what those are. Their research shows that if they do, it can lead to cirrhosis of the liver. Nice. So, right, mail. That's going to be more important. So he's going to grab net login. Uh, let's have a look at this. So he's big into his philanthropy, he's obviously a much more successful rabbi than Rabbi Stone. Clearly that's going to cause some kind of rancor. Okay, ah, so we've got an email here called Joe from Ethan G. So this is interesting. I'm a bit concerned about this investor you set Jack up with. Can you tell me what you know about him? E, aha, but we don't have a we don't have a sent function on this, so we can't see what Rabbi Zelig replied. Jack Lauder. Ah, so this is him being set up with the investor. Are you sure he's on the up and up? He has money, certainly, but the man gives me the serious creeps. We need the money, so I will accept it for now, but I was hoping you could tell me more about him. I see. So who's Ro who's Roy at undisclosedemail.com? If that Goldberg character has been making waves, you know what to do. Ooh, so there's some kind of mystery going on here. Ethan's been giving me trouble, so that's not a problem. I'll get in touch with I chat with him. Joe. Okay, so another bit of praise for his services, and... Uh, this is from his wife, A. Ethan worked very hard for the Jewish community and to a lesser extent Beth Tikva, and I'm sure he's very happy to know his work was appreciated. Alison Goldberg. Interesting. Oh, the Jack Lauder here. Uh, the police are asking about Ethan. I told them who he was meeting. They say it's not important. So there's some kind of conspiracy going on here, and I bet Zelly is involved with it. Right, so it looks like he's set Jack up with some kind of mobster. And, yeah, Zelig's got this, uh, ooh, you call yourself a Jew. Wow, that's um, pretty harsh for a rabbi. Ooh. Um, okay, ah, so some kind of agreement has been made to do something about Jack because he was getting in the way. Jack was very devout, and I felt I owed it to him to give him a proper Jewish funeral. Thank you so much for your help in answering all my questions. I'm sure Jack would have appreciated the effort and care you put into the surface. I'm going to... Try to prepare a proper shiva. You are welcome to come by to pay your respects, Raj Shri Lauder. So that's his wife that we've met already. Hmm. Okay. So that does give some cause for interest, doesn't it? Now we've read all that. Let's see if we've got anything else in the clues. Hmm, doesn't look like it. Well, okay. Let's head back out onto the mean streets. See if we can find out any more about Rabbi Zelig. And whatever he's up to. Rabbinical intrigue being... Ah, so that's okay. So we've got a new location here. We've got Murray Hill. You can go to Paddy O'Hare's Pub, which is just up the road from the Garment District, where... Ooh, so we've got a... Interesting, we've got a new location here. Some nice uh, background art. So there's some... Yeah, there's a uh, bunch of graffiti. This is apparently not a very nice district, or at least uh, a little bit run down. So bar is underground, which is very... Cheery. Looks like the Mafia bar out of The Simpsons. Alright, who's this? 
So we've got woman, bar patron, and bartender. All right, let's Maybe. have a chat with our... Yeah. Nice night. Whatever. So what's your name? Look, could you leave me alone? Okay, don't bother random strangers. <laughs> Should we ask about a random... Uh... Do you know what yeah, why not? Marco? Sure I do. That's my name. Really? Yeah. What of it? You're a hard guy to track down. Well, yippee. You found me. What do you want? So long. Nothing yeah. for now. We'll uh, explore the rest of this place and see if there's anything that comes up. Let's have a look at the shelf. A large selection of spirits. Should have a chat with the bartender. Vague disinterest. Okay. Can I buy a drink? That would be the normal thing you do in a bar to sort of earn the bartender's trust? No, no, apparently not. I'm okay. looking for information on Ethan Goldberg. He was killed outside of this bar. Do you know anything about it? Nope, apparently not. Do you okay. know Mr. Jack Lauder? Uh, okay. I'm looking for information on Joe DeMarco. Okay, don't think I'm going to get anything out of the bartender. And what about this woman here? She looks nice, she's got glasses. Excuse me. Hello? Okay. I won't forget about it. Okay, she's not in a good way. Right, so there's not much to do here other than talk to uh, yeah. Joe. Yeah. Right, uh, in that case, might as well work our way through the tree. What's your beef with Ethan Goldberg? Never heard of him. Your name appears in connection with his. Lots of Ethan Goldbergs. Lots of Joe DeMarcos. Both are common names. You got nothing, so leave me alone. Ethan was killed just outside of this bar. Coincidence. You still got nothing. Okay, seems like a pleasant chap. Uh, let's ask about his religion. Is he Jewish? Marco. Huh? No. What the hell is Jewish? Okay, he's not that much of an idiot. He lives in New York. Never mind. All right, let's ask about Zelig. No Rabbi Zelig. What's a rabbi? Yeah, I'm pretty sure his this name is a uh... Amos Zelig. Nope. Sorry. Pretty sure this is him just putting it on. What's your connection with Jack Lauder? Don't know him. Sure you do. He wrote you a number of checks. Whoever he wrote them to, it wasn't me. Your name is on the checks. Then it's some other Joe DeMarco. Get out of here. Well, only one option left. Your name comes up yet again, Mr. DeMarco. This time in several emails addressed to Rabbi Zelig. So? So what's the deal? It wasn't me. It was another Joe. Can it? Sing another tune, because I'm sick of the old one. It's enough evidence to book you if I choose to go to the police. So are you gonna tell me what's going on? Okay. Fine. You wanna talk? Let's talk. But not here. Follow me. Ooh. Are we about to find out what's going on? Has the grand conspiracy been exposed? Oh, nice buy you got here. Sorry I couldn't buy a drink. Come on, Rabbi. We'll have more privacy down here. I got a bad feeling about this, if I'm honest. Pissed off the wrong people, Rabbi. I had no problem with you, but now I gotta kill you. Oh. I see. You're an assassin. I had a feeling you were smart. Oh god, that face is very, terrifying. Very deep. Look at that. My people? You mean the Jews? A very cozy operation. What sort of operation was this? Don't think I'll be doing that. Professional courtesy. Say goodbye. You think I'll go so easily? Don't make me laugh, old man. Do you really think you'll get away with this? I've been getting away with this since I was 12 years old. <laughs> How does a 12-year-old commit murder? Old commit murder? Same as anyone. Someone asked me to, so I did. Do you do everything people ask you to? If the price is right. What happened to you? 
Why are you so angry? Stop asking me these stupid questions! I am what I am, alright? Very poorly recorded and lots of clipping issues on the audio. Um... Why are you being so defensive? I am not being defensive! I'm just taking the option here of keeping asking questions. It seems to be going quite well. Are you hiding from something? What? No! What the hell are you talking about? Are you hiding behind that knife? I... well... No! At this resolution, it kind of looks like an ice cream cone, if I'm honest, but, uh... Care to prove it? What? Go on. You don't need the knife? Prove it. Or are you nothing but a nebbish? You son of a bitch. I don't need a knife to take your sorry ass. Heh. <laughs> Old man. You're funny. <laughs> oh cool, so sitting in a street you fighter. Your god's going to help you out of this? Perhaps. Perhaps not. <laughs> But my four years on the B'nai B'rith Yeshiva High School boxing team will even the odds. Yeah, what the hell, go man? Rabbi Stone. Perhaps you didn't hear me the first time. <laughs> now, do oh, great. I have your attention. Let me go, man. You have two choices. Stones are meant. Answer my questions, or I throw you onto the tracks. Ooh. What? That was great. You're crazy. Am I? Train's coming. Make your choice. Fine. Fine. Who sent you? I... Answer. Zelig. Zelig? He's hooked in deep with the mafioso. Did you know that? He'd find struggling businessmen like your friends Jack and Ethan, and then hook them up with investors. Investors? Mafia investors. He got them involved with the mob? Yes. He got him in debt so deep they needed a tractor to pull them out. When they refused to pay, I was called in to take care of them. So you killed Jack Lauder and Ethan Goldberg? Yes. I see. Well, one question remains. What should I do with you? Just let me go. Well... Ooh. Interesting moral choice here. Only a two-way one. Sadly, it's only a very small adventure game. Um... Well, Rabbi Stone is a bit of a grump. He's not very nice. Uh, we get the impression he's quite depressed and dark in his sermons. I don't get the impression he's a murderer, though, uh, so I'm going to show some mercy. So there he is, unconscious but alive. Purpose to fill. I've done all I can. I've shown mercy. The rest is up to God. Wow. Yeah, I am a mensch. Uh, okay. Well. What the hell do we do now? Go and confront Zelig? Nope. No, apparently we're back at the Lord's place. Hello? Mrs. Lauder? Rodtree? Hello? Oh no. Chairs overturned, glasses broken, telltale signs of a struggle. Well, at least it's not a body. Okay, so we've got a note on the mirror here. Let's see what that says. A note? Shalom, Rabbi Stone. Evidently, my associate proved unable to complete his task as I as he did not contact me at the usual time. I believe we have business to discuss. Do stop on by. An address on the Upper East Side followed. Jack. I'm sorry, Jack. As a man, I wished you all the happiness in the world. But as a rabbi, as a religious leader out of duty, I could not accept it. Can you understand? Jack. Jack. Forgive me, Jack. I'm sorry I cast you out. I'm sorry my actions sent you down this path. I... I... Get a hold of yourself, Stone. This isn't your doing. All men have reasons for doing what they do. Some reasons are good, while some others are definitely evil. But most lie somewhere in between. For once, my reasons were crystal clear. Zelig.
Okay, well, I don't have much of the choice. Let's go over there and confront him. Oh dear. So he's got Raj Shree. Rabbi Stone, how good of you to come. You didn't leave me much choice, Rabbi Zelig. That's not entirely fair. You could have walked away. I made a commitment. And you're so good at those, aren't you? Tell me what you want. I only want this, Stone. You're going to walk over to the balcony. Take a nice long look at the view. Enjoy it. It costs a bundle. Then, when you've thought carefully about what brought you here, you're going to jump over the edge. <laughs> okay. Uh. Well. And why would I do this? How about to save her life? I see. And if I refuse? I shoot her, then you, and throw you both off the balcony. I'd prefer to avoid complications, but it's the same to me either way. You think you'll get away with this? You have no idea what you're messing with, Stone. This goes way beyond you or me. I don't claim to see what lies beyond. All I see is a man charged with leading his people, but instead leads them to their deaths. It's not that simple, Stone. It never is. Pull your head out of the clouds and take a look around. This is how the world works. So, are you going to jump? Or is this going to get messy? Alright. Right. Let's you go out on the balcony, I suppose. You hold all the cards. Good boy. He can be taught. Start walking. Now, open the door, Stone. Wait, there's one more thing. Oh god. Why do you want to do this, Rabbi Zelig? Zelig! Oh. You! You son of a... DeMarco, you idiot! It's not enough you bungle your assignment. You show up here? Did anyone follow you? I want my money! You want what you deserve? Fine. Oh god. Oh no, poor DeMarco. It really would have been less painful to get hit by the train. I took a quick glance at Radstri. I couldn't help but think that a close call had been made. Served his purpose. I'm not sure why that would stop him from shooting here as well. He got more than three bullets. Well, here we are. I don't really want to jump, so there's not much I can do here. Uh, I can't grab his gun from this range. I'm way too far out. Uh, stall him? Hey. Can it, Stone? You're on the edge. Now die with dignity and jump. Hmm. Well, now he's stepped a bit closer. Can we grab his gun? Caught me in the left arm. The pain flared like a supernova. Now jump. We're closer still, though. Let's try it again. Right, okay, both arms are out. Your That's not great. For pain is indeed impressive. I'm almost tempted to watch you bleed where you stand, but time is short. Now jump or die. Uh, okay, let's climb over the edge, see what happens. Well, what are you waiting for? Just admiring the view. Yes, it is nice, isn't it? Now he's distracted. Weak from blood loss, I couldn't hold my gun. I couldn't keep my hold on the gun. It slid out of my fingers like melting butter. You, you momzer, you are a nothing. What's this? You think you can knock me out like? I don't know how we can fight. We've been shot in both arms. I am Amos Zelig. I've spearheaded the strongest Jewish synagogue in Manhattan for over thirty years. Who are you, little rabbi? Who do you think I am? Those tricks won't work with me, Stone. I've been playing that game since you were knee-high to my tukus. You think you can out-rabbi me? You call yourself a Jew? You call yourself a hero? How can you face God knowing what you've done? 
God knows more than anyone how the world works. I'm sure he understands. Are there others like you? More than you can possibly imagine. Is this how a rabbi acts? This is how the world acts. How can you live with yourself? With power, respect, and money. I manage quite well. Do you really think God will understand your actions? God knows what is necessary. I'm sure he understands. Are you happy with this life, Zelig? Yes. Are you? You really think a rabbi acts this way? I told you, Stone. This is how the world is. Get used to it. So we seem to be just sort of trying to move him to the left. Um, I ask again, how can you live with Keep the yourself? focus on him. I have all so now we fought him over to the left-hand side of the balcony. Are we going to punch him over the edge? Is this how this is going to end? Zelig, it's over. What do you have to say for yourself? Mazel tov, Rabbi Stone. I applaud you. To have come this far, you certainly are resourceful. Just what are you saying, Zelig? I do remember Jack Lauder very well. He came into my office eight years ago, looking to get married. It seemed that this Zionist pig-headed rabbi was against it. Oh, the things he said about you. Imagine my surprise when you showed up in my office. Yeah, I bet you were shocked, all right. I've done some checking up on you. In all these years, you've never learned to make concessions. Concessions? Concessions? The Jewish people are slowly becoming extinct. For thousands of years we've struggled to keep our place on this planet and you talk of concessions. As a rabbi, I do everything I can to help. And if that means refusing to conduct an interfaith marriage, then so be it. Ooh. I can still look at myself in the mirror and call myself a rabbi. What are you, Zelig? You're nothing but a common criminal who consorts with gangsters and assassins. We all have our place in the big machine, Stone. And you? You're just a tiny squeaky wheel. Now be a good cog and just let me go. I know you don't have the guts to throw me over. Ooh. Well, let's keep our moral consistency, even if we are a bit of a bigot, as that conversation possibly reveals. It's a difficult moral quandary, though, because I can sort of see where he's coming from from a religious perspective, and, you know... I just think, yeah, let's not kill anyone else this evening. So, it's over? It's over, Mrs. Lauder. We'll leave Rabbi Zelig for the police. You're... you're hurt. You're bleeding all over. It'll be okay, Mrs. Lauder. Okay? You were shot. It's all right. Let's just get out of here. Well, all right, if you say so. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine, Mrs. Lauder. Call me Raj, please. After all this, I think you deserve it. But we're going to the hospital and no argument. Sure. Ooh. So by saving both of them, I get the Ubermensch achievement. Excellent. And the book ends on the same song that we heard from him at the beginning of the game. So we got that money from Jack's will and we paid off our debts. And Zelig is arrested, or at least heading to jail, if he's not there already. And nobody is still in the travel. congregation. Is it only in the aftermath of pain that we are justified in questioning God's fairness? Just how much pain must occur to legitimately raise the question, why do bad things happen to good people? Just how much pain? Is Red Shriek? God might not seem fair. We may not always feel connected to him, 
That is, we may feel lonely, and often do. Yet the underlying reality of our lives is that we are always connected, whether we feel it or not, whether we accept it or deny it. The connection is there. And since we are connected, we are responsible. Battling for goodness is how we give our lives meaning. Maybe there are no answers. Ultimately, we may never find that elusive truth. Yet ultimately, we may find something else. Meaning, significance, and fulfillment. If so, that may be enough. Dear God, I hope that's enough. And there we have it. The Shiva. That's quite a nice, neat little adventure game. I thought only two episodes long, not a very long one at all. Probably took me less than two hours to beat. But, you know what? I think that was a pretty good one. So as the credits roll, what did we think of the Shiva? Um, in gameplay terms, a little bit lacking in variety. Um, there wasn't a huge amount of puzzle variation. There weren't multiple solutions to anything. There was usually only one route through at any given point. But, you know what, for a little two-hour game that cost a couple of quid, I think that is perfectly reasonable. And, you know what, it tells a good story, it's got some nice, uh, it's got some nice music, it's got some nice atmosphere, and I think that it explores a side of culture that we don't really get much of in, in fiction. Um, so I feel like I learned a little bit, a little bit of insight into, um, into Judaism from playing that. And, you know what, if it's educational and it's fun, I think that is enough for me. So, thank you for joining me in the Shiva. Uh, and I will have something else with you following this in the Wednesday and Sunday slots. And until then, thank you very much for watching. I have been Robin. This has been G Digital Wilds. If you'd like to help me grow the channel, uh, you can always subscribe to me on YouTube. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash digitalwilds. And I will see you next time. Thanks very much. <laughs>